personally, I was really excited about this segment of our uh, program and, and talking about the, the Safe River and Schools program and our partnership with local schools. Uh, we have a couple of folks um, who are going to fill us in uh, on the program. We are going to start off with Kathy Morris, um, who is a uh, uh, consultant working with Safe River on helping us build this program. She's brought a tremendous amount of expertise um, to us as we, uh, this partnership has grown and evolved. Um, and we have Mary Bowman um, from Thousand Islands Middle School who's involved in the program. Um, unfortunately, Maria in the series wasn't able to attend today, so Patty will uh, give her a presentation. We'll do a little and switch there. And then we have some really fantastic students who are going to uh, show us their project from this, uh, from this semester. So, Patty, uh, I will turn it over to you. Um, I'm always really excited about this part of the program as well, although I'm excited about the whole day. Um, so, some of you may have been here in years past and heard me speak, and I am really excited to talk to you about the growth of this program. Um, but I want to say first that a thank you to Ann Ward, because I think Ann was really persistent in, in this concept that we needed to get the ideas of Save the River and issues about the environment into our schools, that we really need to begin to nurture the next generation of river keepers, and you'll hear me say that probably a few times over the course of this presentation. I also want to thank Heather White, because Heather, years and years ago, um, started incorporating safe river and river activities into her kindergarten lessons and, and working with the colleagues at Sherman Elementary. So in 2009, when I began working with Stephanie and Jen and Sarah around developing this program, we really had a good foundation. We had support, we knew we had support from the board, and we had ideas that we could build on. And so, you know, it just kind of took off. Um, the other thing that I... Am I doing this? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, okay, so, and of course, without support, financial support, from the Fresh Down Foundation and from Leonard and Miller Ferguson and from the Edward John Noble Foundation, we would not be able to do the kinds of things that we are doing today and growing the program the way that we grow it. In 2009-2010, we had five teachers involved in the summer training. We had Mary Ellen Carroll, who is here with us today. She's still part of the program. And Um, from Watertown, from Case Junior High School, who was going to speak today, but had to be for a family emergency. We also had a couple of high school teachers from Watertown High School, and one of the reasons that I left their names up there, they're not participating currently, and, and one of the reasons that they're not participating currently is because, as you might know, there's been some significant cuts in education. And cuts in education means loss of teachers, and loss of teachers means moving some people around. So those two teachers, while they're still working for Watertown, we're not necessarily working in areas that really fit with the theme of Save the River. So I just I kind of want you to kind of keep that in the back of your head. Um, and, and remember that second slide, because without that financial support, we cannot support what teachers want to do in their school as well as we can. And it's really been, I think the teachers will tell you, and the students will tell you later, how fabulous it is that we've been able to put in the on the water piece for teachers and for students. Um, the exciting thing is, so this is 2009-2010, our first school year, and here's how many teachers in school we had, we had participate in the training this past summer. So we are in Watertown, Thousand Island, um, Lafargeville, Lafayette School, down outside of Syracuse, Elementary Central, Sagas Harbor, Lyme, um, we even have participation from the New York State Zoo at Thompson Park. We've entered into a, a, you know, kind of a little partnership with them on how we can encourage each other and support each other and have teachers doing some things in Watertown and doing some things on the river. So it's growing wonderfully. And we're really thrilled about that. And one of the reasons that it is growing so wonderfully is that we have been able to add an on-the-water experience, and I think that um, Marie was going to talk to you about how we changed up the training this past summer. 
The first summer we had five teachers sitting in a room over at the Antique Boat Museum for two and a half days writing curriculum. It was extremely boring. I, <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, it was exciting because we had some resources and we did a lot of jazz and things on the computer. But we were in a room for two and a half days. You know, it took a little while for the light to dawn for me that we needed to do something a little bit different. With support, we were able to change up the training this past summer. We did, um, we took teachers for a whole day over to Thousand Islands Biological Station on Governor's Island. John Farrell and his team there were fabulous. And they created hands-on experiences for, um, for the teachers. So the teachers got to experiment with labs that they could recreate or apply in their classrooms and also in taking their children out on the river. So Kate's just going to scroll through these. Um, so this is the biological station, and John had all kinds of things set up for folks to do. Um, and I just, I'm going to stop talking for a minute and just let you look at the pictures because, you know, a picture is worth a thousand. Thank you. Specimens and tanks of things and people went on the water and did some singing and um, water quality work. We get ready to go out on the boat. Field trip um, opportunities that we 
made available through Save the River for students this year and actually last year um, at TI for TI students. And also I'm going to talk about some of the follow-up activities that we've done in the classroom uh, this year. So. Okay, I can go ahead and do this. All right. Um, curiously, we actually had two field trips um, on June 6th, which would have been for last year's 7th graders or this year's 8th graders. Um, and then we have the, the one that we did this year on September 27th. And you can see we had a full day. Students arrive at school at 7.25 in the morning at our school and are dismissed at 2.30. And uh, so we were on the bus at 7.45 and we got back and just in time for dismissal. So the kids were out and doing things all day, which was great. Um, uh, just to give you an idea that all students, um, and we had a total last year, I'm going to talk about the first uh, trip and then talk about the second one. On the first trip, we actually had four rotations, and that's what we continue to do for the second year, for the second trip as well. All students had an opportunity to participate in all of the trips, which is nice. So we had broke them up into four groups, and uh, then we had 25 students in a group with two chaperones plus the presenter, whatever we were doing at that time, and we'll be talking about that. Um, the first, uh, again, this is all about our June presentation. Um, we had Bud Andrus, um, who is, is with St. Uh, Lawrence Bald Eagle Working Group, and I'm sure many of you know him because he was a um, former board member with uh, Save the River, and also, uh, a form, I think he's a retired Parks Canada uh, employee. So he uh, gave a whole great discussion with the students about bald eagle preservation and also about ospreys. Um, so that was really great because part of our curriculum was talking about endangered and threatened species and habitat preservation, why we're having problems with these species and so forth. So this lent itself very nicely to that. Uh, the next one that we had was uh, the other uh, presentation that was done that day was a trail hike. And uh, Sue Wise, who's the educator at uh, Cornell Cooperative Extension of Jefferson County, provided that. And she basically led troops of students, these went beyond the rotations, through the woods, um, and they had quite the workout. And she kept them going. But she's very knowledgeable about invasive and uh, native plants. And the students were really uh, taught uh, about which ones were native, which ones are non-native but not necessarily causing problems, um, and then which ones were invasive. And as part of that, students identified garlic mustard, um, Japanese barberry, uh, another one that they had was looking at what is invasive honeysuckle versus what's normal. Um, and then the other thing that she brought up was the whole idea of lichens, because we talk about the process of succession in an ecosystem, how landscapes change over time, where you start with bare rock, which are lots of it around here, and, and lichens uh, form on there, and uh, then eventually that breaks into soil, allows vegetation to grow from grasses to shrubs and trees, etc. So she talked about the fact that we have so many lichens, which wouldn't be able to be here if the air wasn't clean and fresh. They're an indicator of a good, sound environment. So that was uh, another thing that she addressed on the hikes. And then we had uh, Kathy, who you just heard from just a, a moment, who is our, our kind of guru here uh, for our project. And she led the students on an, ob an observation um, art activity where they actually uh, had kind of a quiet reflection time where they actually would draw um, different parts of nature of their choosing and uh, use their observational skills that we encourage in science and, and uh, their art ability as well. And then, as you can imagine, the book tour was a huge hit with students. Um, and that was guided at the time by Stephanie Weiss, uh, because at that point, the edu we didn't have an education program manager. Kate hadn't, it wasn't here yet, and didn't come till the fall. And then we had Sarah, who had left, you know, for grad work. Uh, so S Stephanie did a great job guiding the students along the eco tour, along the St. Lawrence, around the area of Wellesley Island, around the nature center. So we were able to hop right on a boat right there, which was fabulous. Um, so again, we had about 25 students on the boat, and she talked to them about ospreys. We saw ospreys and osprey nests. Um, we talked about the common turn, and we saw where uh, they were. 
um, and the preservation efforts that are ongoing with those. Um, also talking about specific invasive species, uh, zebra mussels, round goby, um, that type of thing. And one of the things that I particularly remember that I learned a lot, and you always learn, you know, when you're in this kind of from experts in the field, is really understanding how unique this ecosystem is because of all the shoreline and because of having access to the water, the, the variety and biodiversity that we have here, so how unique it is in all of the world. So that was a, just a, a fabulous experience. Um, so then we have our follow-up trip that the kids, that the students are, that are sitting here at the table right now had a chance to participate on in as well. And once again, same kind of routine. Everyone had an opportunity to participate in all the rotations. Um, on this one, we changed things up a little bit. Uh, we had Jane Carver, um, who's a Master River Keeper training, who you, I'm sure you, many of you know. And she talked about to the students about the river training program, um, or the river keeper program, and really spent some time on uh, training the students to identify certain kind of indicators of health within the river ecosystem. Uh, things like fish kills, um, and when they should be reported. And things like, uh, such as identifying, again, something I learned, identifying normal foam that's a normal environmental feature versus that that is not normal and how to distinguish between the two. Then again, we had the chance to go on a trail hike and this time it was Lynn Pike and Lynn uh, is an employee of the Nature Center, uh, seasonally, and she again led us through similar to what uh, we had with Sue Wise in the springtime, um, but this time the butterfly house was open and in full uh, form, so we were able to see them in all their different states, and I think that was something the kids really enjoyed. And I know the teachers did too. I had a lot of the teachers that accompanied us tell us how much they enjoyed that. And that going that whole process of the life cycle is also something that's required as part of uh, our education at the seventh grade level. And then we had Colleen Bernard, um, who was the former educator um, at the Thompson Park Zoo. Uh, and she actually came and really did a wonderful job on uh, talking about food chains and food webs and what were native animals and what were actually uh, non-native invasive animals. Um, and she actually had, uh, as you can see here, she had a snake um, that she was passing around with students that they got to touch. And I did that, but I did not touch the rat. She had a rat. <laughs> well, I dissected them before, but I don't have fond feelings for rats. I don't know how rats are. Uh, we had a wolverine pelt. That was pretty cool, too. Uh, so, you know, it was a neat, neat thing. And then again, we uh, had our boat tour again. Uh, Stephanie was guiding that along with Kate, because this was right upon the time that Kate had, you know, was just starting. I don't know if you've been there a week. It was her first day, okay. and, 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 and you can see how ruthless that uh, Stephanie is because she put her right to work. Uh, but uh, Stephanie had, uh, had, as part of our work over in the, uh, you know, Governor's Island, we learned how to use secchi discs. So um, Kate was coordinating that with the students, and you'll see in a, this is a student looking over, and you can see the rope here, but looking over the side of the boat um, as they were looking for that disc. Uh, to disappear. So that was really a, a kind of a cool thing. Uh, so a new addition that we had for this tour. So I just want to talk briefly just about some of the follow-up activities we do at the middle school. And I want to say one of the really, really unique things about this whole program uh, with Save the River is teachers are still able to go in the direction that they want to go. So even though I teach seventh grade and Maria Mazaris teaches seventh grade in Watertown, we do some things to, that are similar, but we also do things that are more suited to our personalities and our nature, which I think is true of all the teachers that have been participating in the program. They can go in the direction that maybe best suits their talents and the population of students they're dealing with. So here you can see them uh, with the Secchi disc uh, reeling that in. So that was a big hit this year. Um, when we got back the next day, because we were, they were scooted off on the bus, uh, we had a chance to do a little journal activity, and this was something really that I adapted from what Maria had uh, developed. And uh, you know, she we basically were you know kind of quizzing them on 
with the experience that they had had the previous day about the Riverkeeper training and the nature hike and the boat uh, ride and zoo activities. So things they weren't maybe sure that they couldn't, um, you know, they couldn't identify. We were able to, again, reinforce that uh, as part of this journal activity. So that's one of the things we did. Um, another was that taking that Secidus uh, data that Kate collated for all the four groups and then she sent me a beautiful handout with all of a table with all the readings because when they did that, they took readings at several different places along the river. And those of you who were like me didn't know what Secidus was at a time, um, it's uh, something that shows the clarity of water. So you, you basically put the uh, disc down and measure uh, how how far it goes before you see it disappears to view. And so we did that in several parts of the river. So when we got the data back, as part of a unit we did, and actually on scientific inquiry and uh, measurement and so forth, we actually did a bar graph. All students did a bar graph based on that data that was collected for us. This is something I presented um, two years ago, a project that I've continued to do with students uh, and also maybe enhanced it a little bit this year. Um, but we did uh, the Invasive Species Project, and as part of that, students watch a, a video about alien invaders throughout the world. And basically, it centered, a lot of it was centered on the Mediterranean Sea and Calerica taxifolia, uh, this weed that's growing in the bottom of the Mediterranean. Um, but other gypsy moth caterpillars that many people my age remember, um, having big problems with in the Northeast. Uh, so we had that, um, we, we do that video. And then we go do a web quest in the library. We actually go to websites, and I have developed uh, little handouts for this, um, talking about Save the River specifically, what its role is, what they do, talking about the ecosystem and that type of thing. And then specifically, we go to another site where we talk about invasive species, and I'll show you that in just a moment. And then there's another place they go as part of this web quest where they find out about how they can prevent the spread of invasive species. Um, in the water. Um, and then this year we had the chance to do, um, in some of my classes, a skit where they took information from their web quest and actually came up with a skit. Um, so this is the, and I won't spend much time on it, but this is a really nice website uh, developed by uh, Sea Grant that we use. And they have this actually all for all over, all the different parts of the United States. Um, and so we are, you know, in the Great Lakes, St. Lawrence River region, so these are are uh, top suspects, and you can see it's you know it's a nice humorous kind of uh, cartoon. So it's not heavy duty research, but there's a lot involved in it. And again, the way they they worded it to me, I didn't I can't take credit for this because it was actually Kathy during our boring training the first year. She spotted this, and this is more my mentality. I think that's why I teach seventh grade, uh, but. Uh, you know, I like to have a little fun, and uh, that was that to me. That was a lot of fun, and, and yet educational. So this is what the students did. Their research as part of the invasive species. So each, basically, two students um, in each class, approximately, had the same invasive species they researched on. So uh, then, what we're going to do? This is brand new. Um, that I'll be doing with this unit is uh, so a piece that's really a classification piece in part that I do with my living uh, characteristics of living things. But this is also C. Grant. I found this this summer and um, called Fin Tails, Scales, Identifying Great Lakes Fish. But it's basically um, a really uh, neat little dichotomous key. And if you don't know what a dichotomous key, it's basically a way of identifying um, an unknown species. Sometimes you find them in a guidebook of a bird book or that type of thing. You see a field guide. And these are actually, um, this is one that they developed where you know you take parts of uh, the fish and then identify what the fish is. So on the next page you'll see, don't kids who have to close your eyes, you can't notice because we haven't done this yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> these are the answers. So, uh, so, so anyway, as you can see, a combination of uh, both looking at uh, native and invasive species, like the sea lamprey. So uh, you get a variety on this. Uh, I've tried to convey to you that I'm not done my work, even though it started in September. 
It still goes on. I have things that I'm going to be doing, as I just said, with that dichotomous key. So I, I continue to integrate, and I think I build on what we've done throughout the year. So I, I just put this up, and I did this quickly. So I didn't even cover part of the terminology that's covered um, in regards to the curriculum, the things that we've gotten as part of Save the River, the field trips, um, and all of the other information that we have done. This is, it's limited, there's actually much more than this. And I related back to that trip um, and our research that we've done so many times throughout the school year. So I, I find, have found it really, really valuable. Um, we also, I just want to mention that uh, last year when we went in uh, September, or in June, we had some uh, people with us. We had Watertown Times sent a reporter um, so they were at the trip, on the trip, and uh, Stephanie actually was, became very famous that day. She was in the paper, a beautiful picture of her on the boat giving her the tour with the kids. And then we also had a reporter from the North Country Public Radio who actually did a piece um, as well. Uh, so I think St. Xavier River got some good press that day, or in the last couple of days there as well. And for, I, I do want to say thank you to so many people because um, the students you can see. Sometimes you forget what seventh grade students look like. But you get the voice <laughs> and how they act. But you know, um, I really want to thank State Save the River staff, um, the board members, and the funding uh, foundations because truly, Kathy referred to this. There is no way that we would have been able to take those kids out this year and last year. And it was, you know, kids, I do a end of the year, what did you like best about the class? And hands down, it was the Save the River Field Trip. Uh, so it's something that's really memorable for the students. It's wonderful for all of us. And it's a, it was a bonding experience for us when we went out at the beginning of this year. Because we really had only had the kids for three weeks in the classroom before we took them out. Uh, on this trip, so it was really a wonderful uh, experience. And I have to give, I picked on Stephanie a little bit for today, but I really have to thank her because she did so much work to make this happen. It was incredible, and she was holding down her real position and doing this as well. And you know, we're so glad to have Kate, but I have to say, this is really hard and something I didn't mention, and she may have forgotten, or maybe she hasn't, we had to actually postpone the trip was planned for the previous week in September, but we had bad weather, so we had to reschedule things, and that's no small task. So thank you so much, uh, Stephanie, for that. And then also I have to uh, say thank you to Mrs. Percy, who, if you'd just stand up for just a moment. Mrs. Percy is the middle school uh, principal at uh, TI, and she has been so enthusiastic so supportive of any of these initiatives. It's really been great to have an administrator back to you like that. So I realize how grateful that I am. Um, and lastly, I just want to thank the kids because they have just embraced this experience and, and really have had a ball with it. So uh, it's made it fun for me and it's certainly, I think, made it fun for them. So we have three of them here today and they would like to do the skit that they performed in class. We have uh, three students. We have Lindsay Denae, and we have Brayden Frederick, and then we have also Katie McCarthy. And Katie is a real trooper because she actually didn't do this presentation. Another student, Mallory Cooley, did in our class, but she's up playing hockey in Ottawa today, so she wasn't able to come. So I'm going to have the girls come on.
books and stuffed animals that Heather uses in her kindergarten classroom. So thank you very much. I'd like to say something. Okay. <laughs> Natural. Okay. <laughs> One of the most exciting things is when, I'll probably cry because I get so excited about this program, but uh, after so many years, you know, it's happening, and it's happening because of all these people. And once a year, we seem to get together, get the teachers together at our house, and one of the exciting things is how the teachers interact. They're all they're from different schools, different grade levels, but they all have such wonderful ideas, and it's just great to see this happen. So. Here's to the teachers.
You know, I, want to, um, I know things are tough in the schools, um, and uh, but I do want to uh, go back to the beginning of Kathy's presentation and recognize the foundations um, that have supported this program. Um, and I think that's why this is such an interesting partnership, uh, because we have, we know at Save the River that we are not educators and, and we don't know what's best for the classroom. And uh, we have an incredible group, you know, with Kathy and all of our teachers who can work with us on that. Um, but we've been able to go out as a not-for-profit organization and fundraise for this and apply for grants and apply for funding to help fill that gap. We know that schools are in um, difficult financial situations, and so we have been able to step in and we have funding. So if, if anybody in this room knows of a teacher who's interested in getting involved, um, interested in doing field trips, but is saying like, oh, it'll never happen, I don't have funding, we can help out with that. Um, and so we've had very generous support from individual donors, but also from the Edward John Noble Foundation and the Fresh Sound Foundation. And Jeff, I'm gonna put you on the spot, but I'd like you to stand up so we can give you a round of applause. The Fresh Sound Foundation was one of our initial donors. funders that um, really believed in this idea, helped us get some of those initial training sessions off the ground, um, and has helped sort of continue uh, providing that support to help us innovate with the program, um, and that's been so important. So um, all hope is not lost, and um, absolutely, if you do know an educator who's interested, have them give us a call. You know, I know it's a long process, but um, we, can, uh, we can make this happen. So thank you all so much for your time. I don't know if I did this, but... Just personally, as an educator, I want to thank the individuals that saved the river who have really supported this process. Many museums, many not-for-profits who do educational outreach develop kits. They do lesson plans, they do kits that they then deliver to schools, or they go out to schools and they deliver a program. And they go in and then they come out. Um, and, and the folks that saved the river were really listening and appreciative of my perspective that it's best to get the teachers involved and let the teachers create their own curriculum. That way it's ownership and it will be in the schools continuously. And I think Mary and her curriculum 